Hey guys, uh, I'm Jay Bob. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be getting after some chores, but first off I'm going to be explaining uh, how our milking machines actually work because well, some, most of you are probably actually older dairy farmers and you have a pretty good understanding of how milking machines work. I always want to put information out there to help like further knowledge because there's plenty, you know, there's only very few people are actually in the dairy industry. So if anyone happens to click on this video and, you know, is wondering, wants to pursue more knowledge about dairy farming, I, I'm kind of obligated to help show them like how it all fits together, whether they're an ag student or just someone who's down the rabbit hole of YouTube, show them some information about farming. And also, uh, thank you guys for all the support on my last two videos. You know, I've, it's crazy to me that both those videos even got over a thousand views because I can remember not too long ago, I was freaking out when my first video hit a hundred views. So thank you guys for all the support, but without further ado, we getting into it here pretty quick. So right here, this right here is uh, the milking machines that we use on our farm. It's what they look like with Budomatic or whatever. But all these things have technical terms. So this right here with the, like the little peephole, when it's obviously milking on a cow, you can see this is where the milk comes in first. This is called the claw. It's just what where the milk comes into before it gets taken away. Um, depending on how these are made, these can also be called the milk tubes or the inflations. And the reason that they're called the inflations is because inside of them there's these four like little things whereas this right here you see it like pulsates so like it inflates to simulate the nursing of a calf on a cow's nipple while it's also being sucked by the vacuum machine um and what does that to the inflation type thing is that blue box right up there it's powered from the vacuum lines it's it pulsates so like it only like it opens and closes opens and closes opens and closes so this inflates and deflates inflates and deflates and also by the the pulsator lines um these are called detachers you know you can this is like the on and off button and then this is, is to put it on manual because right down here with this sensor and this also these work together in tandems this is uh the shutoff valve it's called, or it's just called a sensor. Um, the way that that works is so like when the machine is on and hooked up to a cow, as soon as this sensor senses that there's no more milk coming through, it'll tell this to close and the detacher to pull all of the line back in. Obviously everything's shut off right now, so it's just hanging there, but it'd pull it back in. Um, and then continuing on down the line, all of the milk gets pulled into these stainless steel pipes, which then go into this barrel and there's another sensor in here that once the milk gets to about here, a secondary pump that's right underneath this bucket is all. All right, a secondary pump will turn on and it'll pump all the milk over to the milk house. And then what creates all the suction comes through right here in this thing. And there's a little plastic ball that sits at the bottom of this in case that sensor fails and the milk comes over in here the vacuum pump will then suck the ball up and it'll go up into that pipe and it'll turn off the vacuum pump so you don't suck any um, milk to the vacuum pump. And I'll go and show you guys what the actual pump looks like that makes all of this in here possible. So we actually have two of them back in here and one of them, this one doesn't work anymore. We're gonna put in a backup. This is where we usually keep the backup, but this is our main one. And what goes on is you have a big electric engine. Actually, the cover's off this one. So the big electric engine, you know, this one's all taken apart, but it turns and then that turns your vacuum pump, which then goes up through all the plastic pipe or all the PVC pipe. And, you know, obviously creates, it's like a giant vacuum cleaner. You can think of it that way. It's just sucking air, sucking air, sucking air. So you create this tremendous amount of vacuum pressure so you can run all the milking machines at the same time. Um, if we come back out over here. So one of those pipes carries the milk, stainless steel pipe comes over and the milk comes down and it comes right through here. And the reason why this pipe is so much bigger right here is because there is a filter that goes right in here. And then the milk goes into here and you can think of this right here as like a car radiator almost because you know the milk comes in at like body temperature of a cow which is around 100 degrees and it goes up and down up and down up and down up and down through this it's called a plate cooler it goes up and down up and down up and down and then it comes out on this side 
at like around like 30 something degrees. Like you can see that our tank right now is sitting at 39 degrees. Comes out like around somewhere 30, 40 degrees. Way cooler than, you know, when it goes in. Comes out, goes over here. And usually this right here will be switched around and it'll run into another bend. It will then go into the tank, which will run through a secondary filter in case the first filter didn't get it all already cleaned enough. You always want to keep the milks nice, clean, and filtered. <clears throat> and then right down here, there's this little attachment. This valve, if I were to open it, it would release the might of like, you know, a couple thousand gallons of milk coming out. But this little hole in the wall in this valve, whenever the, uh, the milk truck shows up, that's how they get into our parlor. They bring in like a big hose, open that up, and then it pumps it over into their milk truck. But that's basically the life of milk from a cow to the tank. And that's how it gets done. Um, but anyways, if you were just here for the quick lesson on how milking machines actually work and how the milk gets moved from the cows to a big holding tank. And beside, by the way, they only stay in that tank for less than one day and our, our milk gets picked up every single day. But if you were just here for that lesson, thanks for stopping by. Um, consider subscribing, but everyone else who wants to stay till the end of the video, I'm pretty sure me and my brother are going to be doing some chores, maybe welding on some gates, feeding some calves maybe. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching if you're leaving now, but you know, everyone else, you're welcome to stay. You don't have to leave. Uh, I'm going to keep on going with the video though. I had someone asking about our calf setup. Um, right now it's just, we have this upper calf barn, then we have a lower calf barn with more calves. They have all these metal lockups. And then for the younger calves, we have all these pins set up in here. Not sure if we're gonna keep these pins permanently. Me and my brother just whipped these up not too long ago, actually. And they seem to be doing their job so far, but we might wanna get something better. It's just some wood calf pins. Oh yeah. That's the current setup for our calf situation, at least. This is the lower calf barn. It's more the same thing. Uh, when the calves first come out of the pens up there, they go down there and they have like the wooden lockups. Then once they get bigger, they get moved down into this group. And then once they get even bigger, we put them back up over there where the young calves are across from them. Looks like I need to roll out that hay bale. But yeah, we just give them grain and hay their normal feed. Fun fact, actually really sad fact. Uh, we live in one of the most rainiest states in the US. Washington state records like multiple feet of rain every single year. And we do not own a single cab tractor. So we're just out here in the elements farming. Hopefully this year we can finally get one. Hoping for it, fingers crossed. But if not, then you know, whatever. I've been doing this for a couple of years, so. No cab is whatever. So, <laughs> Jordan was just telling me that apparently uh, they were trying to get the big bull into the hoof trimming chute because he had a sore foot and they couldn't get him into the chute, obviously, because he's a super big bull. <laughs> and they let him out into the holding pin here, which is where that, that gate that Jordan has over there is usually set up right in here. And he thought they were still trying to mess with him and he tried to jump over top of it and like flatten half the gate. So Jordan's trying to get it welded up before the afternoon milking starts here. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. But uh, thankfully the big bull's still all right. I think he's standing right over there. You can see him, big tall back, big bull. But we are gonna have to get him at some point here and fix his, I think it's his front left foot that he's having issues with. You can see him, he's gimping a little bit over there. Trying to move back and forth. A little bit below 50 degrees, but the sun is out and there's no wind at all. So that's notable t-shirt weather just because you stay moving out here on the farm so much. And also, if you're wondering, the Johnson Dairy thing, it's uh, we keep that around we, to like pay homage to the dairy farmers that dairied here before us. It was 
was the Johnson dairy for a super long time and also because giant thermometers like those things that are custom are really expensive so like we thought why take it down at all just keep you know some of the history of the farm around we like that kind of stuff but uh yeah about to be done with trying to fix this gate here in a second me and Jordan are going to get it back in there all right me and Jordan are about to get the uh holding pen gate back in here so I set this up it's gonna time lapse it out real fast we'll have it all pulled in through there and set up and I think we're gonna take that one out we'll be back in a sec If you made it to the very end end of the video um if you have any ideas on what i should do next on my farm comment it down below i'm super open to any sort of suggestions and i'll try and incorporate them into my next couple of videos but uh yeah thanks for watching and as always peace out